All right, this next section, we're going to talk about two different individuals, Deming and Duran, and their contributions to the quest for quality. So I really like this um, quote that kind of stood out to me, managers should be helpful rather than authoritarian. And instead of just saying, this is how you do it, it's my way or the highway, we should be helping our team members and our employees be successful. We should help them have the tools available for them to be the, the best that they can do at their job. Um, we should offer them support uh, if they have questions or they need additional coaching. And so rather than just saying, go and do it, which I think happens a lot of times in our industry, in the hospitality and uh, tourism industry, a lot of the times um, we learn OTJ on the job. And um, and so it's really just like, follow me and then go do it. Whereas um, a leader or someone who is in that position of management really should be constantly looking at um, what tools are available to my team member and are those tools allowing them to be successful and succeed at their jobs. All right, so Deming is the first person that we're going to speak about, and he has 14 points. Now, if you were starting a business from the ground up, these 14 points might be helpful in shaping your overall image, your overall um, format of your organization. Now, if you're working in a business that's been established for a long time, you might see you know, parts of these 14 points. You might even see some areas that might need a little bit of improvement, a little bit of work on. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around to all 14 of these points um, and we're gonna start in the bottom left with create consistency of purpose. So this is really important that you want to make sure that you remain consistent with your core values. Make sure your business has a clear purpose of what it is doing um, and you stick with that. And so that way um, your guests always know what to expect, your team members, and employees always know kind of what the processes that are expected of them. And uh, if you veer too far from that uh, purpose and you keep changing it over and over and over again, it creates a little bit of confusion. The new philosophy that he talks about is kind of more shifting the focus from quantity over to quality. So in our industry, in hospitality, restaurants, hotels, of course, we want repeat guests. We want people to come back. We want, we want people to tell their friends and family about what a great time they had at our hotel, they had in um, our restaurant, at our destination. Um, and so to do that, yes, we want to build that quantity, but Deming is suggesting that we focus on the quality. And if we focus on that quality, then we will make sure and ensure that people will want to come back and spread the word and boost that quantity. Um, and so we want to focus solely on that, um, well, not solely, but primarily on that uh, quality of the service, the quality of our product that we are putting out. Ceasing the dependency on inspection essentially talks about, you know, if somebody is doing a job and they know that someone's gonna come behind them and correct their mistakes through an inspection process, then they're not really uh, motivated to do it right the first time. So I'm going to use housekeeping as an example. Um, if a housekeeper knows that the inspector, the supervisor is going to come by and fix any things that they missed on the checklist, then um, they may just continually check uh, miss those because they'll know that they'll just get corrected in the long term. Whereas if that supervisor then calls those things that um, that intention to the housekeeper, then they are forced to go back and redo the work. And, um, and that takes away from their productivity of their other um, areas. And so then essentially, eventually they will learn to, to do it right the first time so they don't have to go back and, and redo the work. And if they don't, well then that's where our performance evaluations um, come into play. In, uh, ending the practice of awarding business based on the price just essentially talks about um, you know, establishing good long-term relationships with your third-party vendors. There's something to be said about a long-term um, relationship with a third-party vendor, a supplier. Um, and if somebody comes in and they're just lowballing it just to get your business, um, there's, there's no 
there's no promise that you're going to maintain that good quality relationship that you have. Now, if your relationship with your vendor is already on the rocks and somebody comes in and um, offers an alternative, you might consider that. But if everything's smooth sailing, then, then why rock the boat, essentially? Um, improving constantly goes along the lines of our um, continuous improvement. So whether it's our process that leads to better guest satisfaction, or it's a process that leads to um, better management of our budget, then we want to make sure that, um, that we're always looking for ways that we can improve, that we can um, better the process for both our employees as well as our guests. Um, in, instituting job training. So a lot of times in our industry, we do what was called OTJ, on-the-job training. And so it's really difficult for us as managers to get upset with our team members or our employees if they haven't been properly trained. And so we need to be involved. For example, I was um, in, in training to be the assistant lead trainer for the Cheesecake Factory here in San Antonio when it first opened, um, about eight months after it opened. And, um, and it was very, very regulated as far as the curriculum that I had to teach because I had to make sure that those servers were ready to get out onto the floor. Um, but even then, we didn't just turn them loose. We actually had them shadow. We had them follow. And then we had designated trainers that knew the criteria that actually would then watch them and then report back and see that, that they were ready to be on their own. So we need to have that, um, that job training. Otherwise, it's very difficult for us to you know, implement any kind of performance evaluation um, if they haven't been trained properly. Um, we want to, as far as leadership, this kind of goes along the point of removing any obstacles that um, our team members have that are going to help, uh, they're going to make them less successful. And so it's important for us to always be present, always to be aware of the environment, what is going on, what struggles, what challenges do our team members have, and, um, and what can we do to remove those obstacles for them so that they can be more successful. And you cannot do that sitting behind your desk in your office. And so walking the property, walking the restaurant, walking the hotel, being visible um, and observing the things that are going on are ways that you can institute that leadership. Driving out fear, De uh, Deming talks a lot about, um, you know, I kind of refer to it as the open door policy. So if I'm a manager, I've got an open door policy it means that my team members, my employees can come to me at any time with a suggestion, with a problem that they're experiencing. Um, and you want to have that open door policy so that they feel comfortable doing that. So driving out that fear that people do feel comfortable. And if they feel comfortable and not um, with the risk of any kind of retribution or any kind of punishment for bringing things to your attention, well, then that's how we continuously improve. We can look at things that are constantly coming to us as issues, and we can improve on those. Breaking down barriers de between departments is one of my favorite points. Um, it reminded me of a time when I was at the Sheraton Gunther Hotel. I worked in the restaurant, and um, every time there was a show at the Majestic Theater, we always had a super salad buffet. And, well, with a super salad buffet, you have to have a lot of soup spoons. And um, there was a, an issue because our banquet department did not have enough soup spoons for when they had banquets up on the second floor. So as a result, they would always come and raid our supply and then we'd come in and we'd have a soup salad buffet and we had no soup spoons to give our guests. So it got to the point where we found this little panel in the wall that we could remove the panel and hide our soup spoons so that our banquet teams wouldn't come and get it. Um, and, you know, it really has kind of caused this tension between the two departments. And it was really important that, especially in a hotel, in a restaurant, that all the departments work together. Um, as a server, I know I remember a lot of times I used to um, think, well, that person looks like they might eat their steak medium well or medium rare. 
if I accidentally forget to um, ask the temperature of the steak. Or I would just put medium, kind of right middle of the road, and hope that they wouldn't mind that. Um, and so then the kitchen would make it to temperature. I give it to the guest. The guest would be like, oh, this is too done or it's not done enough. Um, I have to send it back. And the kitchen gets that confrontation with the servers. And so, you know, if that happens on a regular basis, as a manager, we need to be aware of it and then figure out what can we do? Um, what process can we implement um, to alleviate, alleviate these um, barriers between these departments so that everybody works together? I like this one about eliminating slogans. We've all seen that picture of the cat that just says, just hang on, and the cat's hanging on there with his front two paws. Um, Duran, um, he, or Deming, I'm sorry, Deming essentially says that these slogans don't give the employees any indication of how to achieve the task. It just simply says, if you try a little bit harder, then you'll be successful, which subconsciously that's saying you're not trying hard enough. And that employee might actually truly be trying the hardest they possibly can. And so what we need to do is, rather than have those slogans of um, perseverance and just hang on and all these different things that don't really kind of give any guidelines of how to be successful, but rather than giving those more coaching and more um, ideas about ways that um, the team members can be more successful. As far as eliminating work standards and quotas, this one I kind of, um, you know, kind of tossed back and forth a little bit to think about. And um, the thing that I came up with is it's important to have quotas, but at the same time, they need to be achievable. Uh, because if you set it out to be too like a too large of a quota, then people are focused on that quantity and not the quality, and then the, the quality can suffer. Um, and so the thing I think about when um, I think of quotas in hospitality is in the housekeeping department. So in the housekeeping department, you know, a lot of times people, have, uh, housekeepers have either a checkout, meaning the guest has checked out and they have to reset that room completely brand new for a new guest, or they have what's called a stayover. And a stayover is somebody who's not checking out, they're staying over the night. Um, and so in a stayover, we just do a quick touch up, we remake the bed, replace any used amenities, um, any additional towels that we need to put in there, take out the trash and that's pretty much it. And so a stayover takes a lot less time versus a checkout. And so it's important for like, let's say a executive housekeeper to understand how that workload is divided up by their employees and their team members. I also think about a time, a summer when I was a pool service technician and I would go and I'd clean pools and I was paid by the hour um, and I would still get my job done. And, you know, I'd spend about 45 minutes to an hour at a pool and they budgeted between 40, an hour to an hour and a half at each pool. And, uh, and so I would get done 35, 45 minutes, um, cause I was just knocking it out, wanted to get my job done. And, um, and so one day they told me like, David, you're not spending enough time at the pools. And so it turned out to the point that I literally would sit in my truck for 20 minutes. Cause I knew it would only take me about 30 minutes to do the pool, sit in my truck for 20 minutes, run the gas, uh, run the AC. So I'm wasting gas. Um, I'm sitting there and then I go out, do my pool in 30 minutes, come back. Well, my GPS said I was at the pool for 50 minutes and that's my quota. So you can see sometimes quotas can, can establish, um, a sense of complacency and a sense of, oh, this is what I have to do. So even if it's going to take me less time to do it, I'm still going to take this amount of time because that's what my quota says. Uh, we always want to make sure that uh, we allow our employees to have a sense of pride in the work that they do. Um, you know, they, the whole the whole saying of you never work a day in your life as long as you're having fun. And, and I truly believe that. And so I know that not everything about our jobs is going to be sunshines and rainbows. Um, that's that's not what I'm trying to say. But what I'm trying to say is that we really need to give our uh, team members the opportunity to take pride in their work. An example, um, when I worked at TGI Fridays and um, I was a culinary arts student and I wanted to um, design some desserts because I was tired of the way the desserts looked. And um, now granted, 
This was a corporate restaurant and corporate rule says that you have to present the dessert in a specific way. And so I get all of that now as an industry professional, but as an 18 year old kid um, working at this restaurant, I couldn't understand why my boss was in, uh, requiring me to set and create the desserts the way that the picture was. Um, and so essentially she told me that I could keep doing it as long as I explained to the guests that this is my own creation, that I was a culinary arts student, that I was playing with plate and design, um, and that they would not get that unless they, um, uh, if they came back and they had somebody else as their server. And so, um, so she allowed me to have that sense of pride in my work, and I was much more successful. And the quality, the guests really enjoyed it, even to the point where um, six to eight months later, when I was actually at the Cheesecake Factory, on a busy Saturday night, I'm behind the bakery counter doing my thing, plating cheesecakes, I'm in a rush, and out of the busy lobby, I hear someone yell out, oh my God, your desserts by David. And I turned around and I was like, oh my gosh, Rochelle, what are you doing here? And so, you know, it really kind of created that, um, that sense of quality and that sense of, um, that sense of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Loyalty to the restaurant um, because they wanted to come back to have desserts by David. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, we always want to make sure that we have some kind of program of self-improvement, whether that includes some kind of education, if we have a tuition reimbursement program, or if we have ways for our team members to gain more um, training, to gain more experience. Um, that also can play a little bit into uh, the role of cross-training. So at the Cheesecake Factory, I started out as a server, um, and then I was a designated trainer for the servers, and then I transferred over to the bakery, and I was a baker for a little bit, um, and then I was a cashier for a little bit, and then ultimately led me to the assistant lead trainer for the store. And so that consists, that self-improvement, that cross-training, gives us an opportunity to always continually to grow our skills. Lastly, we want to put everyone to work to achieve the transformation. So whatever the quality management um, program is or the process that we're trying to address, we want everybody to be involved because that way when um, the end result comes in and we achieve our goal, well, then everybody was a part of the solution. If we do not achieve our goals, then those inhibitors can't say, well, we didn't achieve the goal because, you know, so-and-so didn't do their part. So we want to make sure everybody has a clear role in any kind of transformation that we're going through. Joseph Duran is the second person I wanna talk about briefly. And he talks about products and processes that equal customer value. So products is like physical things, but it's also service related. Um, and the processes are the ways that we deliver those products. Um, and that is going to lead to uh, our customer value. And, and so we wanna make sure we look at those different things today. So the product features first, quality um, as the product features means that those features of the product need to meet the guests, um, the needs of the guests. And if they don't, well then there's no really need for them. And so that doesn't, really, that's, that doesn't necessarily create quality for the guest. And so we can take um, guest surveys, we can take comment cards, we can take our Yelp reviews, we can do all these different things to assess whether or not our guests feel that our service is of quality as well as our product that we are giving. You know, are our hotel rooms current and updated and all of everything in good working condition? Is our food excellent and meet the needs of the guests um, and their expectations as well? Moving over to the right, um, quality as freedom of defects. And so if we can take, remove those defects from our product um, or our process, then it re re removes the need to rework. It removes the need to, um, basically it removes the, the mistakes from the situation. So I'm gonna go back to my example of the steak. And um, sometimes I would forget to ask my guests how they wanted their steak prepared. 
And by doing that, if I just rang in something, then the steak would come out and they'd have to go back and remake it. Well, they remake that steak, we have to comp it off their bill. Um, that's, that's money that we're not uh, bringing in for product that we're selling. Um, and so if we can identify where the um, process is going wrong, which in this case, I as a server kept forgetting to ask what the temperature was that they wanted. And so if we want to improve that quality of that service, well, ultimately what I ended up doing was I put a little sticker inside my um, notebook that said, don't forget to ask steak temperature. Don't forget to ask which dressing. It kind of kept me from having to go back to the table and say, oh, I'm sorry, what kind of dressing would you like with your salad? Or I'm sorry, how did you want your steak prepared? Um, and so all those things that I would constantly forget as a new server, my manager sat down and coached me and she said, okay, these are the top three things that you're constantly forgetting. So let's see what process can we implement um, to improve that so you don't have to. And ultimately it was just a little note inside until I got to the point where, oh yeah, I need to remember that. Um, the freedom of defects also lessens the need for guest recovery. So if you're not familiar with guest recovery, it's just a, a fancy way of saying fixing the problem. So whether that means we have an issue with a hotel room, whether we have an issue with um, food or whatever, um, if that there's no defects in that product or that process, um, then that's what Joran is saying is quality as uh, freedom of defects. He also mentions that um, planning and control with as far as it refers to his quality um, is just as important and very similar to our financial budget. And so we need to actually take a look and see what we can do, um, what processes are we lacking on, what, what areas do we need more work on, um, and then we're going to set those goals. And then the control part talks about comparing our actual to our targeted. So if this is what our target um, goal is, we want to look at what the actual is on a weekly, bi-weekly, um, semi-monthly, monthly process, quarterly process. We want to look to see if we're meet, meeting our goal. We don't want to wait until the end of the year to see if we've met our goal. We want to have those little checkpoints along the way. And if we're not on target, then we need to take some corrective action. And now corrective action seems kind of harsh, um, but like I said before, my manager, when I was a brand new server, she sat me down and we did a little coaching session at one of the booths in the back. Um, that's corrective action, not just waiting to say, oh my gosh, maybe eventually David will get the steak, right? No, she actually sat me down, took time, and that's that corrective action. Um, and so that's kind of what Duran talks about as far as quality. Um, as far as the product and the processes. Now, as far as improvement, um, we can, you know, these other three areas, defects, um, product features, planning and control, all address that customer service, all address that stuff right now. So quality improvement focuses on avoiding our dissatisfaction. So that's part of that process of looking and seeing what areas do we lack in and what can we do to improve. Um, and then ultimately, these lead to these breakthrough performances. And so I'm gonna use that example, that last example of me and the steak. Um, that is a breakthrough performance. I can, I can honestly tell you, I cannot remember the last time I forgot to ask a guest um, about their steak temperature after that, um, that coaching had happened because that was a breakthrough performance. Now I don't have to revert back to um, the ways that I was going before. It just becomes habit and it becomes part of my quality management.